the world is changing fast. New technologies are impacting how we think about products, services, and the way we live our lives. Nowhere is this trend more present than in financial services, where new business models and customer expectations are changing our conceptions about banking, finance, and the very nature of money. Welcome to ReBank, a visionary podcast about banking, fintech, and the future. The future of banking is here. Hello and welcome to ReBank. I'm your host, Will Beeson. Today is a special episode of great personal importance to me. I've been learning and studying and training in fintech for years, both as a founder and through this podcast, where I'm able to have conversations with the most visionary and impactful founders, CEOs, and VCs in the world of fintech. For the past year, I've been channeling all of this experience and insight into a new company called Bella that's leading with digital banking in an effort to create positive change in the world. Bella launched in the U.S. on November 30th, and everything has been a blur since. Taking a new consumer company into the world for the first time has to be one of the most thrilling experiences that exists. In today's conversation, I'm joined by Angelo D'Alessandro, CEO of Bella and my co-founder, but more importantly, my close friend and mentor, to talk about what we're building. We cover our backstory, Angela's approach to building teams and brands, Bella's vision and offering, the state of the world in 2020, and the implications for startups and brands going forward, and more. For all of our past episodes, and to sign up to our newsletter, please visit bankingthefuture.com. Thank you very much for joining us today. Please welcome Angelo D'Alessandro. Angelo D'Alessandro, welcome to Rebank. Hey, Will. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Did I pronounce your name correctly? <laughs> Perfectly. You speak Italian better than me. I don't know if your <laughs> I don't know if your audience knows that, but but you're you're great in Italian. I don't I don't think they do. I was daydreaming about at one point doing some sort of um, podcast only in Italian. Today's maybe not a good day for that because I want the message to be uh, to be spread far and wide. So. I think the best place to start has to be our origin story. We first got in touch through the podcast, actually. You were at the time, and I can't remember exactly when this was, but it must have been, I don't know, going on four years ago. You were starting the world's first conversational bank called Buddy Bank in Italy. And I was enamored with the concept. I was starting a bank in London at the time which we launched last year called Alica. And we were part of a very small group of people in Europe, uh, digital bank founders. And, And I reached out to you because I wanted to be able to tell your story. And that conversation never happened. You can tell us why. But Refresh my memory because I love hearing you tell the story. So, so where did it go from there and how did we get here? Sure. When you uh, contacted me, we were in a very particular phase of Body Bank as a project. And by the way, Body Bank is a very successful conversational banking experience up and running in Italy and, and was the first uh, digital bank based on a conversational platform that uh, at the end of the day is the live person conversational platform. But beside that, with Body Bank, the story was pretty crazy also one of the best experiences i ever had in my entire career and we launched body bank as a separated company totally disconnected from unicredit unicredit was our strategic backer let me call it like this and was our investor the only investor we had uh, at that time so we went for a banking license we built the technology outside unicredit and we had two huge sponsors the uh, one was the ceo uh, federico Vizzoni, now uh, Federico is doing other great stuff. And the other one was uh, my boss, a great visionary, brave, one of the best top managers I ever met in my life called Paolo Fiorentino. So both of them and our uh, the board of directors of the UK decided to bet on body bank and create this a new bank, a new bank, not a digital channel, a new bank. Uh, unfortunately, Federico left Unicredit and, and uh, also Paolo left Unicredit. And a new top management, a more conservative, let, let me call it, came and um, took the leadership of the bank, of the entire bank. And, you know, most of the time when this thing happened, they try to, the new people join and they try to 
<laughs> kind of delete, remove everything happened in the past. Most of the things, but not, not all of that. Fortunately, they didn't remove body bank. But we were living in that phase where you contacted me, actually, uh, a very particular and weird uh, six months where we didn't really know what, what was happening to the project and to the bank itself. And when you called me to do the podcast, we were in that phase. In that phase, in Unicredit, there was a, a kind of weird uh, personality, a lady. I, I can't recall the name, but she was leading communication uh, as a consultant. But <laughs> and basically, the, they stopped us to communicate anything we could. And also, especially things outside the perimeter where BodyBank was operating. So when I asked them, can I go and do this podcast in UK? Uh, that actually was not in UK, but it was international. Uh, they, of course, they told me, no, you can't. So <laughs> I was very upset. But due to the fact I had a meeting with HSBC at the time, to, with my innovation peers, let me call it like a free conversation with them, uh, I, I came to London and we met, I remember, for a lunch. And uh, when I saw you the first time, and we started to talk about your passion, what you were doing, you were building a bank as well. And... Um, and your, your passion for Italy, and you started to speak Italian, I, I saw, I, I, I told myself, this guy is so smart, and I, 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 I love this guy, so I want to I wanna do something. And I told you, it was three years and a half ago, I think, I told you, I will, <laughs> we, I don't know why, when, but we're going to work together one day. And then this happened uh, one year ago when I called you and you, you, you gave me the privilege to, to accept my offer and, and I'm very honored now to work with you and build something together. So firstly, you're, you're way, way too gracious. Uh, the, the honor and the pleasure is all mine. But the thing that sticks out most to me about that day, apart, you know, apart from our connection, but you know, which is, was of course, uh, the, the highlight, but that lunch that you're talking about, it was in, in the building, I think that Revolut either was in at the time or is in now, and there's just something uh, eerie almost about that. In that, in that, what we're doing now with Bella is almost the opposite of Revolut in, in so many ways, which I think we can we can get into. But it's it's funny that there's the there was kind of the fintech, the digital banking link, you know, even there, unbeknownst to us, uh, and now we've kind of come full circle from there. So. You, at the time, were based in Italy. I was based in London. And th the way events played out is that the founder and CEO of a NASDAQ-listed B2B software company, LivePerson, which you mentioned, uh, who had provided some of the, uh, the infrastructure into BuddyBank, basically called you and said, I love what you're doing at BuddyBank so much, I want to back you to found a new digital bank in the US. So move over here and I'll fund you. And you called me and we moved to New York and we did it together. So talk a little bit about how this how this project came together. Yeah, I, I think that in general in life, you know, everything is based on the people that you meet during your journey, do your your act, your scene, your show. <laughs> so as happened, I met in my career now is 20 years. Uh I, I always met at a certain point people that to me were like angels, like real angels, people that literally changed my my path. And this is is something that happens to most of the people out there. Even if you think that it's not happening to you, it is. You just need to be aware and curious to understand who those people are. So, for example, I mentioned Paolo Fiorentino. There is another... Uh, a great man that you 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 met Mauro Castiglioni that was my first boss he was the CEO of Cisalpina uh, asset management company in 2000 when I started to work in in this industry and then there is Rob Rob Locasio Rob or Locascio because it is Italian but here they call it Locasio um, Rob is a is a dreamer and a visionary man who realized something huge Rob did what he has today without help, without a company behind. He built one from scratch. And the one, I remember uh, Rob came to Milano when we were uh, on the market with BodyBank. 
uh, we launched in 2018. And, uh, and Rob came uh, visiting me and he met the team and we organized a very like uh, nice welcome <laughs> kind of ceremony at the office for Rob because we were basing a lot, like we were leveraging a lot like person technology and BodyBank still is doing this thing. So Rob came and he, he saw with his eyes, he saw uh, this brand BodyBank people uh, working there, very excited. Uh, he saw the customers coming in and like using the platform. And um, and he really liked that. And we, we spent some time talking about the future and how we can make the world a better place and what we can do. And and after one month, he called me saying, look, I, I want to I wanna propose you to do something together and uh, in the US. And actually, it was my dream coming here doing that. And uh, so I, I, we discussed a little bit in how we could collaborate with this new brand that we we wanted to launch and uh, I accepted the offer and I started to build the team and uh, and we are working all together with Rob as well, building what we built so far and the future of this brand that will go beyond banking very soon. All right. So b- before we dig into the meat of Bella, I, I want to touch on one thing, which is how inspiring I find you to be as a leader. You were talking about all these you know, CEOs that you knew in, in Italy and the US, uh, and I totally agree with you. Rob is one of the most visionary people I've, I've ever known. Um, but you are one of the best leaders I've ever known. And you've, you've told me this story before, and I won't, I won't uh, ask you to dig into it in detail, but I didn't know when we first met, what, three and a half years ago, that you were formerly a professional jazz musician. <laughs> And, and the way that you did that was basically by pulling together a very strong team of people that could, that had, that had strong technical skills and, and believed in your vision. And you did that then, you did that at Buddy Bank, you did it here again with Bella. D- tell me a little bit about your, I, I don't know, like your, your outlook on how you motivate and inspire and how you build a team i don't know if i inspire but i can tell you what i like to do i like to build brands uh, indeed <laughs> we were talking with rob a couple of weeks ago at his place in new york city and, uh, and i told him i'm not a i'm not a banker i i i work in banking and i'm enjoying it and now in the tech industry but i like to build brands <laughs> so you mentioned that the jazz band and before that actually i did other stuff see we look even when i was a teenager i was organizing stuff and building ideas the first actually thing that i did and you don't know that i brought a musical <laughs> and uh, and in it was like I don't remember neither when it was. Right? It was I built a, I brought a musical and I produced the music. I found sponsor. I put together a cast of pro- professional people. I really don't know how I did it, you know, with the audition and all all this kind of stuff. And we we launched this musical in a, the most famous uh, theater in Milano with big sponsors behind, and uh, it was beautiful. We brought everything, songs, the story, and it was a very passionate and emotional story, and. Uh, so I, I and then I started to study a little bit to, because I, I I pretend to be a singer, but then I realized, okay, what's my dream here? I don't want to do musical because I'm not that good doing it, uh, and I want to I want to sing like Sinatra or Michael Bublé. But I I knew that I was not neither Sinatra or Michael Bublé. But I had a dream, and the second dream after this musical was play and sing at the Blue Note Jazz Club. That, as you know, is a worldwide known. Uh, uh, jazz club. So it's, there is in, one in New York, in Tokyo, and uh, and one in Milano, which is you know is it was uh, I was very proud about that, and I was going there and watching great concerts of great musicians from from the U.S. and all around the world. So I said, how can I reach that stage that I'm not that good? So I said, okay, let's find first. Let's build a brand around that experience. So I went online. It was. Okay, what? How can I call a, a jazz band to to celebrate the the golden age that the Sinatra, the Rat Pack era? And I said, okay, Copper Room. Let's call it Copper Room. Copper Room was the name of the 
club in the, at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas where Sammy Davis Jr., Tim Martin, Ellis Fitzgerald, and Frank Sinatra used to sing. So I say, oh, I, I like this name. So let's pick that name. We, the band is going to call Copper, but it's not enough. So build a kind of good website around, a, a beautiful image. This was like 20 years ago. Uh, and, uh, and how can I reach the Blue Note stage if I'm not that talented doing it, but I, I'm good in building brands? Surrounding myself of very great talents, very great musicians, people that are better than me doing stuff, in this case, playing music. And uh, I did it. I was able to attract very talented musicians that then became friends. And, and little by little, we started this project. And after three or four years playing around in small clubs, finally, we convinced the Blue Note to be to 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 accept us and they gave us the worst Sunday night of the year it was knowing Milano was a very important football match on TV, the most important of the year. So we said, okay, we were gonna, gonna, I don't know, we're gonna have my family watching us and <laughs> that's it. And, but actually we sold out the club and uh, we sold out the Blue Note for 12 dates over a couple of years. So we started to, we went to China for a tour and long story short, that could become my career, but I said no because I was working in banking in the meantime. Say so, no, I don't want to do this. I just wanted to realize that I wanted to measure myself for what I can do. So it was beautiful, but I knew that I couldn't be a singer. But with the same approach, so for this reason, it's very important. Will what we're doing together with the same approach? I built Body Bank first because I'm not a banker, but actually this is my second, let me call it bank, even if it's not a, 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 is a, is a digital banking service, but let me call it bank. And the second one is Bella. With the same approach, I say, okay, I think I have, I, I have some good ideas and I want to surround myself with great people, managers, entrepreneurs that are able to execute the vision, to enrich the vision, to do what we think is right, in, in this case, and I'm talking about Bella, not, not focusing on another digital app or another digital banking experience, but focusing on different things. In this case, focusing on people's values, focusing on, focusing on helping people. And doing it, having fun in a very short time, because as we did together, we built and we launched Bella in just one year. So... This is how I like to build brands. All right. So the time has definitely come to give us the big Bella pitch. What's the 60-second synopsis of, of what Bella is? Very, very good. Uh, so we believe that there is a clear lack of love, empathy, tenderness within the banking industry. So this is what we are going for. We are going to change that, and we are already doing it. Today, the banking industry, and you know that, is based on processes. So everything is connected with processes. We need processes, but we need also human instinct to help other people. Don't forget that even with a Stanford degree, you remain a, 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 an animal. You remain where we, where we all started. We are animals and we have instinct. We need to help other animals. We need to protect ourselves from other animals. And why I'm going that far? Because... Today, we cannot survive just following processes. So if a member of a bank or a customer, as they call it, we call it member, but let, let's call it customer for a second, needs help. And I'm not talking about needs help because they, they, they just need money, but they need help in general. They are in a situation where they need a human help. We need to help. We need to be ready to do the extra mile for them. So this is the core concept of Bella. Plus what we are creating together and I'm happy that you are leading the product and you're doing an amazing job here, is to build a product that can allow people to have fun using Bella, to help other people using Bella, to feel better helping other people using Bella and accelerate this feeling of oxytocin into your body because you know that when we help others, we feel good because it's in a certain way something happened, a chemical reaction in our brain, our body. And with Bella, you can do this from your sofa because we are helping you to do it. All right. So if you bring kind of a grand vision approach to Bella, I think I tend to view things through more of a 
almost like thematic or strategic lens. And that's probably obvious to anyone who's listened to, you know, to, to any significant number of the 200 plus rebank episodes that we've done over the years. But in, in my mind, like the, the most important points here are that it feels like we're at a moment in time in which banking, like as we know it, is becoming a utility. And brands uh, with, you know, philosophies and values in a, you know, increasingly digital and cl- increasingly, you know, I- internationally connected world are where attention and value continue to accrue. Uh, so building and offering banking services with, uh, you know, the, the only, I guess, differentiation from your peer group, if you're an incumbent bank of, you know, the, the color that's on the debit card or the sign that's above the, the door of the branch or the color of the mobile app, which otherwise does all the same stuff, is a utility business and it has utility economics. And in this, you know, digital world of disruption, it's extremely difficult to imagine that utility business uh, being, you know, profitable or, or in any way successful going forward. So the options are basically to maybe overhaul the utility business and make it super efficient, super technological, uh, reduce the kind of the, the role of of humans and just, you know, basically offer it up as like, you know, something equivalent to like an electrical grid for money. Um, okay. The the other option, and, and maybe it's kind of an offshoot of option number one, is to embed financial products in other consumer experiences. So, you know, instead of going to one place for, I don't know, payments and for lending and for insurance or whatever it is, for investments, you, you embed those uh, pieces because you've turned them into software, you embed them into other consumer experiences. So the places that people go because they want to buy something, they want to have an experience, they want to have a meal, they want to, you know, whatever it is. Or option three, the the path Bella is taking, build a strong brand with a philosophy, with a set of values, with a community around something that matters, offer banking for free as a kind of a chassis a foundation on which to then offer other sorts of experiences to uh to a very strong to a very loyal group of of customers and and i think either the embedded finance or the brand option are are going to be very relevant in the future but there's something i don't know call it personal preference Maybe it's because I'm not a, a hardcore engineer, but there's something about the the humanity, the connection, uh, the the engagement and the richness of building the brand and building the community and engaging with customers, consumers, people in a new way, which which just makes that option three uh, so, so compelling. Yeah, I think that the, your analysis was perfect. And I think that here, uh, what we are trying to do is to not because we want to be different, but what we have out there, especially in the in the digital banking space all over the world, we have uh, a lot of similar experiences. And uh, the traditional one that are trying to run to to do something from a digital perspective, they're doing it. So we have great banking experience coming from traditional the traditional banking industry. So there are not a lot of differences now uh, between that. A very well done traditional banking app and a, and a new banking app. Actually, the traditional one can have more feature than than a, a new bank app. But the field and the game that we are all playing, we were, because now we are playing a new one, was based on I don't know. Okay, with me you can open the account in three minutes, and with other you can get paid two days early. The, then you can have the zero point. 5% interest rate if you open. So we were we were all talking about tax stuff or interest rate or how fast could be to open an account. Actually, even if opening an account with Bella is very fast, but we will never sell that because who cares? I'm opening a relation with someone. I don't want to, I want to be smooth and, and fast, but I, I don't really care if it's in 10 clicks or 20 clicks now. And I just want to, Join a brand that match matches up my value, what I believe is right, what I wh- why I feel that this brand is very connected with what I'm doing, and brands like Apple are are they they train, change the world under this 
branding. And so what we are doing with Bella is exactly this thing. When we talk, everybody talks, oh, we're, we're, we're going to build a community, we're going to be... Yes, we should all do it, and we are doing this with Bella. And what is happening just after one, 10 days, we launched uh, 11 days today on the market. It's crazy, what, and you can see it, Will, what is happening. People excited to use Bella, to be part of Bella, excited to wait for Bella. We have thousands of people on the wait list. And I want to talk about the product. Like We're not like promoting Bella with this podcast, but we're sharing a beautiful story let me jump on the details of what, what you can do today with Bella because I want to connect the story, what is happening on Instagram and people can see it. With Bella, you can do two things besides like regular banking stuff. We decided first, instead of spending money on advertising, so on Instagram and Facebook and, and Google, etc., as in a traditional way, let me say, we decided to give that money back to our members. So every time they swipe their card, they could randomly get from five to 200% real-time money back into your, their checking account, which is something uncommon for the industry. So it's not a, a rewarding or loyalty program. And you swipe, you get 0 0.10 points, and maybe after $20,000, you get a flight to go from New York to Miami. We are talking about real money directly into your checking account, randomly. So having fun using that card. And the budget pool is the budget that we saved instead of spending in traditional advertising. Let's see if this could activate a virality that we expect is happening already. But the second piece that is the most successful one and what made, makes me happy and proud is the caffè sospeso. You know, caffè sospeso means suspended coffee. It's an Italian word that we use, and you know what it means, where it's a tradition, actually, um, where you go in a coffee and you pay for two coffees, you drink only one coffee, and you leave the other prepaid for another customer that maybe uh, doesn't have the money to, to pay for a coffee. So we call it like paid forward, but Cafe Sospeso means exactly that. So in Bella, you have the Karma account. You can put up to $20 there, and you could randomly surprise other people that you don't know. And they will receive a message say, hey, Will, uh, Angelo just paid for your coffee, even if we don't know each other, and you can send me a thank you back. This activated a crazy thing. And uh, there are people on Instagram, for example, the two days ago, we had a very intense day here at the company and, and uh, Chelsea sent us a message. Chelsea is our, uh, she's leading operation marketing. She's another uh, uh, jazz band, great team player like you will. And she's doing uh, uh, amazing stuff. And she sent me a message, she, all of us, like both of us, like with the screenshot of a customer uh, uh, replying to a uh, commenting a uh, post that we we posted on Instagram saying, uh, "Oh, I cannot wait to use Bella, but my first deposit could come in like in January." But but I'm very happy to be part of this family. And another Bella member <laughs> replied, "Say, okay, give me your Bella ID. I'm gonna drop some money just so you can start using Bella." And people started to do, to do it. So the, the, we started kind of collective uh, help just for this customer just because. For no reason, just to share some love, which is the principle behind the community we are building, changing the world through kindness, to, through tenderness. So this is, I know this is not an elevator pitch, but th we need time to describe these amazing things that are happening at Bella. And, uh, and I'm very proud and happy that we built this together. And, and uh, I, I really, I, I, there are a lot of emotions going on here around this project and and I think we are onto something pretty interesting. Firstly, I have to, I have to tell a personal story of um, of a pay it forward. So I was I jumped on my bike and rode from Williamsburg over to Union Square and met my cousin uh, for coffee. It was probably yeah, I don't know, like right right around the time that Bella launched. I think it was like a, a Saturday, and he we had just had a loss in the family. And so we were connecting to, uh, to just kind of catch up and, you know, make sure he was doing okay, order coffee and just kind of sat and talked. And it was a, you know, kind of balmy day in, uh, in the late fall in New York, talked for an hour, you know, it was intense. It was emotional. It was deep. It was important. And then I paid for the coffees and immediately as you're describing i got two push notifications one saying you know you just spent 950 and another one saying 
John just paid for your coffee just to show some love. And it was like, it, it, just, it seems like such a small, random act. I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. But it was so meaningful in that moment, you know, like n- not only, you know, not only can can there be those sorts of of experiences, right? Where someone's having a tough time uh, and and someone makes their day. But even in 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 normal cases, there's just a it's that tiny, that fleeting moment of connection in a world which is increasingly digital, which is increasingly disconnected. 2020 has been really hard for everyone. We've been forced to to distance from you know the people that we care the most about. So that tiny little moment of of connection between two complete strangers uh, is is powerful. It's so powerful. And then just opening it up a little bit, like, you know, I, I just mentioned 2020 and what a year it's been. I don't know about you, Angelo, but 2020 feels like, you know, as as confusing and painful and dark as it's as it's been, it feels like a watershed year, you know? Like we're we're gonna look back on 2020 years and decades from now, uh, and and point to it as as the year things changed. And a year ago, right, when you when you and I and Chelsea and, and a few others at that time started, you know, started working on Bella, I think it was it was kind of clear to all of us on some sort of, you know, basic or unconscious level, like what we were trying to do and why it mattered. But for me, at least, it was difficult to, to kind of put into words exactly why it was so important. And then 2020 happened. And and the society and the world kind of realigned, I think, toward positive values and realigned in the same direction that we were pointing. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But it feels to me like um, like there's potential for something big here. Rock and roll, as you like to say. <laughs> Rock and roll, Will. Exactly. And regarding 2020, I think maybe I'm saying something unpopular. I think is a... Uh, it's an amazing year for humanity, and uh, it's like you know, it's like they put our all the human beings in a shaker. You know, the shaker is the name when you where you do the cocktails, right? The the little yeah, yeah. yeah. and they 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 shake us like they shake us very badly. And uh, if you imagine that before what we were doing, we were just overusing everything, the nature and the planet, where we are simply guests. Very short-term guest. Imagine, I remember we were taking one one flight per week, going to business meetings that, with no sense, because we realized <laughs> that we can do the same thing in like we are doing now. And I'm in Los Angeles, your New York City, and we are having a podcast. We help, we are connected uh, all all day long. And so I think that this year, I know that this has been very tough. We personally has been very tough as well. Um, I don't see my family. Last time I, I saw my mom, just to give you some personal stuff. Last time I saw my mom was January uh, 2020. So it's, it's tough for millions of people right now. But I think that it's a kind of renaissance for who will be will be lucky enough to survive to this pandemic. Uh, we'll, we will have a we will have a great opportunity to rebuild something. And and then you know 2020 I I, I would say for us uh, so far <laughs> has been pretty great. We launched Bella and uh, and we are trying to help people to go through this because Bella is making people happy, which is one of the reasons why we founded Bella it was not just to get millions of customers and, and make money out of it, but to change the world through tenderness and helping others. And this is what we are seeing and what is making our days every single day. Love it. Angela, look, this was at least three and a half years uh, overdue, this podcast, but I think we had actually a lot more uh, interesting a conversation than we would have if, if we'd been talking about uh, V1 uh, digital banks around the world. I think we can probably connect. We can catch up. Who knows? May- maybe next year, once the Bella offering, which we're designing and building now, has continued to take shape and we can get into the the social and commerce angles of, of where all this is heading. But look, th- this is exciting. We're going to see where it goes. It's, uh, it's going to be a wild ride. 
And thank you, Will, for this opportunity. And you cannot understand how happy I am, I am of being here in your podcast uh, today because it was something that I wanted to do also three years and a half ago, but I could not. So it's a, it's a personal thing and I'm very excited. So thank you for your time and uh, more than half an hour together. There you go. You've headlined the Blue Note and now you've been a guest on Rebank Podcast. Uh, <laughs> Angelo D'Alessandro, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning into Rebank. If you like today's show, reach out. Follow us on Twitter at Rebank Podcast and join the conversation. For more on banking, fintech, and the future, check out our regular content at www.bankingthefuture.com. Thank you.